So in this workshop and webinar, we're really going to cover 10 things that we want you to leave here thinking about with regards to Microsoft 365 security, compliance, identity and management. And that is going to cover Defender, Purview, Entra and Azure AD, and also Microsoft Intune. We'll give you examples across that massive license set that makes up Microsoft 365. Based on our experience in the field through incident response and security architecture, we'll give you insight into prioritizing security compliance and identity management capabilities within 365. And really what we want you to be able to do is to leave the webinar today uh, thinking about how you're going to get that maximum return on your 365 license investment. And without further ado, we'll crack on with the first consideration we want to run by you folks. Conditional access is something that many of you will probably have heard about before if you aren't already using it. Really think of conditional access as an if this then that engine for Azure AD authentication. And what we mean by that is we have a number of signals such as the user, what device they're using, what app they're signing into, and then also risk elements. We take those signals, we use that as a kind of if statement, and then based on those conditions, we say, well, then allow the user access. Don't allow the user access. Allow the user access, but with certain constraints on it. That is how we make up conditional access. And really, you should be thinking of this as the starting point of all your security in Microsoft 365. Microsoft used this language of zero trust, right? And what is zero trust? Well, frankly, it does what it says on the tin. And it means that we are not going to kind of make assumptions about whether or not we grant standing access to things. When we use conditional access, we evangelize a framework called conditional access for zero trust. That's Microsoft's official framework. And really the reason we encourage the use of that is we go into a lot of tenants and conditional access is there, but speaking plainly, it's not well developed, it's not well architected, and it is covered in gaps. The conditional access for zero trust framework, which is also known as persona-based conditional access, helps us improve that. As far as licensing goes, this is an E3 or an Azure AD Premium P1 feature. And if we're thinking about our risks to the business of not going down the route of using persona-based conditional access, uh, that's gonna be quite high, because like I said, it governs all inbound authentication. So why do we need it? Well, we'll go into customer tenants and it might look something a little bit like this, right? There'll be a number of policies kind of scattered about. Folks have produced them because they need them, but there isn't an overarching governing architecture behind it. With the zero trust framework for conditional access, what we do is we work with customers to really build that around the persona, right? So you're gonna have internal staff, external folks coming in, consultants, etc. You might have developers, you might have HR folks, you might have finance folks, you're gonna have guests, all these different personas. And that's gonna to extend to folks that aren't even, well, real humans, right? Because you're gonna have service accounts and workload identities. So we go through an assessment and figure out, well, what are all these personas? And then for those personas, we determine the right level of access. So for example, an internal member of staff might be allowed restricted BYOD access, but not to all your apps. An external consultant, we're going to let them get a little bit of access, but again, not to all apps, and maybe only under certain circumstances, like if they're connected over a VPN. We go through that, and really what that allows you to do is transform conditional access into a far more manageable platform, where you've got a naming convention, you're using these personas, and you can very easily troubleshoot it, but also customize it and target it. And that's going to be the starting point for a lot of the discussion and the remaining points of consideration we're going to cover in this webinar.